uh, welcome everyone to session number 16 uh, today we will have a short discussion about the quantitative data analysis methods these uh, are like uh, some tricks that we should consider during uh, quantitative data analysis and we will have uh, open discussion and the next uh, session that how to apply different statistic formula and uh, that will be like as a descriptive statistic or, or inferential statistic but actually here we will discuss about um, quantitative analysis uh, some tricks that we should consider during of the quantitative analysis methods so for the first time uh, we know that uh, data should be prepared uh, this is called top preparation uh, to have the quantitative data analysis method uh, we must have preparation of the data uh, to convert uh, for example the data uh, into some meaningful uh, data that should be usable like as that will be it like as chart it will be like as in a table that uh, which will be very easy to for understanding uh, uh, anyway uh, we will have some uh, tips uh, that uh, we must consider it during of the uh, data analysis of the quantitative data. So the first uh, step is that you must consider is data validation. So uh, the purpose of, of, of validation is to find, for example, as per as possible whether uh, the data collection was done as per the preset standard uh, without any bias. So for this purpose, to check the bias and the pre-standard test uh, that we set for the data validation, so we have four other steps uh, like as uh, sub uh, sub steps. Uh, we have developed for the data validation. Uh, and we must check this like it is the first one is a fraud uh, it means that we must identify that how actually we uh, interview it uh, the person or not uh, that we receive the data from that person uh, second one is screening uh, we must understand that the respondent was chosen as per the research criteria or not if he was not selected as per the research criteria it means that the data validation is uh, faced with risk and that it is not valid uh, or if the there was a fraud for example uh, the respondent was not actually interviewed so data validity is uh, data validation is uh, not perfect so the data is uh, not valid uh, also procedure uh, for example we have, mm, should check the procedure that we set for the data collection and we must understand that that was followed or not by the data collector and also completeness uh, completeness is very important that we must understand that the respondent uh, asked all the uh, the questions for example uh, of so this is very important through these four steps uh, we uh, understand the data validation uh, suppose that we have a uh, really large survey for example suppose that we have 200 respondent in two cities uh, we can check it uh, randomly and our data for example we select 20 uh, persons uh, and we randomly check it so during of the random checking we uh, consider these four steps first one is for example we uh, call to this 20 uh, 20 persons uh, we find fraud for example uh, if we uh, select it randomly we will find identify that this was person was interviewed or not for example screening we can check the list of the selected uh, uh, people that should be interviewed 
uh, was it selected as per the research criteria or not. Uh, addition to this, we can uh, check the procedure and also we can ask some question, for example, of the forms, for example, the, of the questionnaires, uh, that all the questions are asked from him, from him or her. So after this, that we this uh, data validation to these four steps, uh, we can jump it to step two. And for example, here also uh, uh, I bring it uh, in the slide that uh, like as per uh, more understanding. The first one is like as fraud, meaning is this like in the question mark. This was actually interviewed or not uh, this is like as a question for example uh addition to this the second is like screening we must understand that it was selected as to of the research criteria or not and third one was like as a procedure and third one, third one is like as a procedure okay so first Second, third, and uh, procedure to, to procedure was followed or not, and for one is complete, completeness said uh, to understand that all the respondent questions are answered, which was required. So when we completed the uh, step one validation, data validation, then we uh, started data editing for the editing purpose, for example, uh, suppose that. Uh, uh, we have a blank data or we have some for example uh, misspelling uh, for example we have spelling issue for example we have mm, uh, like as different uh, problem in the data we can uh, revise the data uh, and we can for example uh, check the layer for example uh, an outlier for example of the data so for this purpose uh, we uh, edit our data in the step second uh, to prepare it for the analysis. So after the completion of the data editing, we uh, jump to step three, that's like as data coding. When uh, we have finished the data editing and validation, uh, so we, we will have data coding uh, suppose that we have 1,000 uh, people uh, uh, and, and they, they, they are in the different age categories. So uh, we would like to analyze the data. So we must find it at how many, uh, for example, respondents were, for example, between 13 to 15 or, for example, from 16 to 18 and uh, uh, and 18 to 20 for example so for this purpose uh, we have uh, given code to coding to data and also here I, I, I have very simple data for you uh, uh, suppose here is uh, some uh, like as uh, names the, I have very simple list. The, these are respondents: uh, Ahmad Khan, Popal, uh, Faisal, Ekrem, John, Laila, Husna, Farida. For example, we have different provinces, like as we have in Afghanistan, like as Kandahar, uh, Kandahar, Logar, Ghazni, uh, Wardak, uh, and we have different age categories. For example. Uh, this person is 13 years old, 14 years, 15, 13, 16, and these are all the ages. So we have coded here, uh, 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 inserted another column, the, 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 the yellow one, that is like as code. So we would like to uh, find the age criteria. So here I have defined some uh, ages, for example, from 13 to 16 is uh, we would like to bring it in the uh, age one, okay? So that's like as and uh, seventeen to twenty is number two, 
addition to this uh, from 21 to 30 is 3 these are the codes it means that from uh, the person who is 21 uh, age 21 and to 30 will be in the code 3 and from 17 to 20 is in the code 2 and 13 to 16 is code number 1 for this purpose for example I have would like to um, a very simple analysis uh, then we would like to uh, analyze the data through a spare table in a simple manner for example we would like to analyze the codes of the age just like this uh, and we can uh, do the analysis different softwares but here I would like to have very simple analysis for this purpose so we would like to uh, copy this and we will paste here oh, yes suppose we will not paste here directly we will uh, paste one two three always therefore it's very good okay now for example this is we will give title to this this is like as age yeah uh, so this is now we found it that uh, in this uh, survey our uh, six respondents were in the code one it means that they were uh, uh, had the between 13 to 16 uh, and we found in the code two for uh, for respondents they had age from 17 to 20 and also we have found two person in the code three the code three is 20 from 21 to 30 it means that the two respondents are from uh, from 21 to 30 uh, this was very simple analysis so we can use code for different purposes but here I have used for this like as age and you can use it for different purposes uh, anyway uh, for the quantitative analysis we must consider these three steps the first one is data validation the second one is data editing and the third one is data coding so here we have quantitative analysis methods so when we code our data we can use different uh, different statistic uh, methods so we have descriptive statistic that's like as very simple uh, like as mean median mode percentage frequency range uh, standard deviation and we have also inferential statistic that we have used uh, for very complex uh, complexes uh, topics that is like as correlation t-test and all and different other for example so for this purpose I would like to uh, share uh, some knowledge about this like as means mean is like as numerical average or set of value so I will give a very simple example suppose we have five uh, subjects in the, in, the, in the course or in the class so we got this score we find here uh, the means for this purpose we would like to plus uh, we will calculate it uh, for plus 5 plus t so 2 plus 3 is 5 5 is per is 9 9 5 is 14 14 is 6 16 16 divide it uh, into 5 because we have 5 subjects for, for this purpose uh, for the first time we will have calculation and then uh, we will have uh, divided put to uh, by the frequency so 
hour uh, minus 3.5 suppose this is uh, our mean for the mentioned subject now we would like to find the deviation a very simple example uh, 2 3 4 5 and 2 median is called the midpoint but one thing we should consider it is in the median that we must arrange the data in the ascending or descending so uh, format suppose we have 2 and then 2 and then 3 and then 4 and then five so we'll, we will sort the data and then we would like to find the midpoint median is called midpoint to midpoint so three is our midpoint it means that our median is three because it divided these frequencies into equal uh, parts to or here into or here but here uh, we have odd in even uh, series and uh, we have different status of the median and um, uh, we have different type of mean we have different type of median uh, but here I, I have given a very sim a simple example but we will have discussion on this on next uh, uh, lectures at how to point for example mean median and different status also we can find here mode mode is called for example uh, common value so the common value here is uh, like as we have uh, 2 2 so our mode is 2 for example because 2 is to uh, to turn uh, we have here 2 repetition of the 2 so this is uh, called uh, mode we have also percentage and we have frequency and also we have range for example range is called uh, here we have two uh, a small frequency and five is our uh, high uh, we minus five minus two so that's uh, like a three so our range is three so we have uh, different uh, descriptive statistic methods but uh, the purpose of all of these is, uh, are, are like the same that we find uh, central tendency uh, but actually we have used it for different purposes like as what's uh, uh, the usage of the all of them is uh, for example different so mean median mode and frequency and range uh, also we have uh, inferential statistics uh, and that is like as t-test annual and correlation and we use it for different purposes for example we check the variable uh, relationship with each other for example we can use it for different purposes and we uh, can use uh, SPSS or uh, we can use uh, to for example manually uh, but here is uh, we can use inferential statistic or descriptive statistic so these were all of the quantitative data analysis methods and tracks that we must consider it during of the quantitative data analysis we will have uh, practically quantitative analysis in the next lecture thank you